Hi everyone, um, I'm just going to do a quick raw edit. I uh, thought I'd just pick something that I haven't done before. Uh, this is a shot from our recent trip to Switzerland. Um, as you can see, I didn't really get the focus all that right. Uh, it's f11, um, but I focused on the foreground rather than a third of the way through the scene as you normally would. I should have focused on these trees or something a third of the way through, but the image is what it is. I've picked it because it's got a high dynamic range. You can see that because we've got clipping happening on both the upper end and lower end of the histogram. Um, and as a result of that, it's quite uh, challenging to make sure that we keep the detail in the sky and that sort of thing. I mean, you can see that we've probably got some highlights that are irretrievably lost. So the first thing I would normally do is uh, check the white balance and the exposure. However, in this image, we probably don't really need to do that because, I mean, we've got a shadow here that's probably my head or something. Um, but uh, the white balance is not challenging because it's daylight. Uh, the um, and the exposure, I'm not going to push it in either direction. I might add a little bit of blacks later, but uh, at the moment I'm going to start with what I would normally do. So in this situation, I'm just going to turn on the Shadows and Highlights module. You can see that we're already getting uh, a bit more um, detail here in these dark sections of the bush here in the foreground, but we're also most importantly pulling back the detail in the clouds. Okay, I'll just go over the Shadows and Highlights module or plugin in a little bit more detail. These two sliders are the primary two that you'll use uh, when you're working on any image. Um, let's turn this on. You can see that the shadow slider is by default boosting by 50%. Um, you can see here if we look at the shadow area, I'll boost that more. You can see that the shadows get brighter as we do that. Uh, the highlights is how much you're reducing uh, the highlights by, and obviously if we pull this down then it gets even darker. Okay, so we can, let's say we wanted to leave the highlights as they were, but increase the shadows, we could do that. Um, I'm just right clicking and typing a number to set it to, to what I want it to be. Um, so yeah, let's reset that back to normal. Now the this is the blur that gets applied to the mask. Now the mask uh, the extent of the mask is uh, determined by this compression value. Um, what this means is the higher the percentage, the more of the image is excluded from being affected by the shadows and highlights. So if it's on 100%, you'll notice I can now do anything I want with these sliders and nothing will happen. That's because 100% of the image is ex excluded from the filter. If I drag this down, you'll see that the, you know, the brightest 10% of the values, I suppose, in the image and the darkest 10% of the values are now being affected by these modifications. So as I slide this down, more and more of the image is affected. So you can see one thing that I'll point out now is as I slide this, you can see the, the mask moving its way up. If we look at the sky here, we can see that there's we can say that this part is being affected 100% and this part is being affected 0% and then there's a transition in between those two things. That transition is affected by the radius here. So if I reduce this radius you'll notice that the transition becomes much steeper. We're being reduced here and we're being untouched here. So um, as far as the manual is concerned uh, it starts with a radius of 100 um, and you know, you might get a more, uh, obviously you've got halos appearing here, so you've got dark halos appearing here and you've got light halos appearing here. If you reduce the radius, then you'll get less of those halos, but the effect becomes less and less natural. You can see as we slide it all the way to the left, we get a very unnatural effect. So that's a trade-off. And one other, one other thing you can do if you're getting halos is to switch from the Gaussian filter to the bilateral filter. The bilateral filter is less affected by the halos than the Gaussian filter. Okay, so let's reset to normal values. The last thing that we have here is the shadows color adjustment and highlight color adjustment. Um, the shadow color adjustment is uh, how much additional saturation should the shadows that are being brightened be given. So let's brighten the shadows a whole bunch. Let's reduce the shadow color adjustment. And you'll see how now the shadows are being totally desaturated. 
uh, by default it's 100% so the saturation of the shadows gets boosted just as you would expect when light is added into a shaded area you would expect to see more color um, and the same thing goes for the highlight color adjustment so let's boost the highlights a whole bunch let's increase this well, in this case you don't see much of a difference but uh, let's have a look shadows let's reset these highlights and let's see if we can get this highlight color adjustment you can see here just on the edge the brightness of the blue being affected by the color adjustment of the highlights perhaps if we pull down the compression a little more to include a bit more of the blue sky yeah so now now you can see that the the blue is being desaturated when I slide it to the left and saturated when I slide it to the right so I'm just going to reset that now I'm going to use the Gaussian because it provides a sort of sharper edge. Uh, if you want the bilateral, you can see it produces less halos, but I actually quite like that effect along the top here of this dark section with the, uh, with the Gaussian filter. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this off now and you can see the additional, um, you know, it's just bringing up, the, bringing up the shadows a bit here and it's bringing down the highlights here and overall it's bringing more detail back into my image, which is what I want. So um, that's cool, so we've brought back a fair bit of detail. Now there's another approach to doing that in the skies. Um, you can see that in this image we've got mostly not sky, but um, where you've got a more uh, sort of even match of sky to ground, you might consider using the graduated density filter. So uh, what this does is it basically pulls back the, you can see I've just applied it, it pulls back the exposure um, by a specific amount and it does it uh, as a gradient uh, so you can see that it's having the biggest effect what I might do is just jack this up a lot so you can see the effect that it's having so I'm pulling back six stops now uh, you can see that it does some weird stuff to the highlights though we get this purple result if you really really pull back blown highlights so you just be a bit careful of that um, so one of the main things about this is the amount of compression. You can see that by default it starts on 0% compression, which basically means, I think, that uh, if it's in the middle of the image, then at the top you get the full minus 6 um, exposure value, and at the bottom you get, I guess, 0 EV. Uh, but if you enable the compression, I guess 50%, uh, you can imagine that 50% might be, I don't actually know if this is the case, but 50% might be at this point here, 50% between here and here is fully minus 6, then a gradient, uh, then um, I think it actually still, still applies some of it. So, uh, so there's a gradient that goes all the way from about here to about here. So you can see that the gradient slowly comes up to here. Anyway, I won't go into too much more detail. Obviously, you can rotate it. You can pull these ha um, these handles here to ro rotate it, or you can just type in a number uh, in the usual way. Use the scroll wheel or right-clicked and type a number, say uh, uh, 90 degrees, for example, or I can click on here. So plenty of ways to rotate that. Uh, in this image, so oh, one more thing, you can add hue, hues and saturate um, a hue. So let's say I want uh, the sky to look bluer. Uh, let's say um, I want to pull this saturation right down. Let's say I want the sky to look bluer. Then I can add a blue hue and a tiny bit of saturation. That will make the make the sky bluer. And this is obviously crazy. So let's. Uh, let's bring this back to something closer to what you would normally use. So you can see that sky just looks a touch bluer now. I mean, a, a, a lot of people would use this in, say, a sunset where they might put a bunch of orange into the sky or, or pink or red or whatever just to enhance and bring the image up to, to what you saw with your eye rather than what you've got in the image. Okay, so let's reset this and actually use it in a sensible manner. So I'm just going to pull that up to there, maybe a little higher. I'm going to increase the compression a bit. Just see that it's it's darkening that there now, and I might push that up. No, that's way too much. I'm just going to leave that as um, one uh, exposure value. Rotation looks... Probably what I'll do is pull that up a little bit because the overall area that I want to darken is something like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And you can see that I haven't done too much yet because we're still clipping here on the edge. Um, so I haven't pulled it back to a, a position where it's starting to be too crazy. Okay, so uh, the next thing will probably the, the um, 
I would have done this before this, but anyway, let's do a crop. I just don't want this um, this shadow of my head to be too distracting in the foreground. Um, so let's have a look at that. Okay, I think that's improved. We've got this little village here, which is <coughs> part of the gondola uh, in this area. I might just crop that grass out because the grass is a bit boring down here. Let's do that. See if we just get the most sort of interesting part of the sky in the foreground, uh, in the background. So there's boring clouds off to the left. So I just got rid of those. Unfortunately, this is out of focus, but you're just going to have to imagine that I got it right. Okay, so the next thing that I would do with processing an image like this is probably see what I can think about these colors. Um, there's no uh, so this is the Velvia module, I've used this before, I've uh, explained it before, but I'll just go over it again. Um, obviously you've got a strength slider here which uh, uh, changes the amount of saturation that we've got here. Um, it affects the, the parts of the area that are coloured more than it affects the parts of the images that are not coloured. Um, and this midtone bias is supposed to protect skin tones. Um, but in this case we have no skin tone, so I'm just going to pull that right down. I'm going to make the um, strength somewhere where it just looks good to my eye, so I don't know, something like 40%, 40, 40%, something like that. So let's have a look, see where we're clipping this image. So we're clipping the reds. You can see this uh, part here is probably these flowers here. Uh, the blue is not being clipped, so that's the sky here, so that's great. I, you know. When you lose, when you clip the blue, you lose um, you lose the richness in the blues. You tend to get whites, white skies, and that's that's nasty, in my opinion. So anyway, we're clipping the red here, which is probably not a big deal. Uh, the red channel, if you clip it, it's not that noticeable to your eye, but you can probably see that this purple doesn't really look all that natural. Um, but we have no choice really here, unless I unless I go and pull the overall exposure down so I might just pull that down by minus like minus 10 or something like that see if uh, see if it looks a little more natural if I do that I mean you have a little bit of latitude to do this in the raw file that you don't in a in a JPEG okay I think that's looking pretty good let me just think about let's see if a little bit of local contrast will help this sharpness at all yeah, it gives a little bit more pop it's kind of like clarity from uh, Lightroom, or we can use the equalizer clarity. Uh, that's way too much, obviously. Let's try the subtle clarity here. So, uh, if you're getting started with the uh, with the equalizer, I'll do. I'm going to do a separate video on this, but you can see that there's a bunch of handles here that you that will change the various um, parts of the image. You can uh, affect the noise by using this lower slider. You just have to grab above the bottom here and slide that up. Uh, that'll denoise the image for you. Obviously this chroma will um, change the how much color is in the coarse items in the in the image or the fine items in the image. Let me do that. So we've got fine. I mean let me reset this. Uh, so let's increase the color in the fine items for example. You can see that these sticks and stuff they got you know boosted color. Let's pull it up in the course. You can see that these big blue chunks now got affected in color. So that's that. You can pull the uh, pull the bottom one up to reduce the noise uh, in the equivalent sorts of things. Anyway, I'm going to reset this now, um, and I'm going to just use the subtle clarity in this image. Yeah, it might even be a little bit too much, so I'm just going to back off this mix a little until it looks a bit more natural. Something like that. Okay, that looks quite nice. Uh, what else would I like to try? I'll, I mean, this was shot at 24 millimeters. I might try the lens correction. Yeah, that looks better or better. Um, depending on where you've shot it, what lens you've shot it, whether it's 24 millimeters or in this case 105, you know, um, there'll be different distortion in your lens. It's always nice to pull that out. One other thing I'll just quickly show you is the. So this is called the waveform. So this is used in video normally, um, but what we can see here actually is that <coughs> as opposed to the normal histogram where the darkest values are on the left and the brightest values on the right, we actually have uh, these values are for a given position x 
along the x-axis. So this part of the histogram corresponds to the left-hand side of the image. This part of this histogram, or waveform I guess, um, corresponds to the right part of the image. So you can see here this blue line up here most likely corresponds to the sky. And then this blue stuff down here probably corresponds to this stuff in the uh, uh, in the hills here. And the red here is probably these red um, flowers in the background here, which are fairly dull. And these red ones up here, which are clipping, you can see all these clipping here, are these red flowers here. So you can see it just gives you another uh, impression about, obviously the green is in the middle here, it's the grass and stuff. It just gives you a different impression of the image than a normal histogram does. It gives you a bit more of a sense about what is clipping. I mean, this linear histogram tells us that we have reds in the image that are clipping, but we don't necessarily know where they are. But if I switch to the waveform, I can see, at least in terms of where it is um, left to right, I can see that the clipping is going on in this region of the image and then you know I can work out what it is from there. So that's another um, cool feature of Darktable that I've not actually seen in any other raw processing software. Not that I'm necessarily um, skilled with everything. Uh, okay so why don't I just finish off this image. Let's just try increasing the blacks. I think I quite like that. Obviously it depends what your uh, aim for the images. If it's going to be displayed on screens, if you're going to post it on Facebook or whatever, it's always good to push up those blacks a little bit because it just increases the richness of the image. However, if you're going to print this image, um, you want to be careful with the blacks because printing uh, often increases the, the darkness of the lowest parts of the image. So you just need to get to know um, wherever you get your prints done, uh, how much you would normally need to push that. Okay, so I think maybe it's always fun to play with a little bit of sharpening and stuff, but I think in this image it's just not going to be that noticeable um, because of the focus problems. But I think I'll just leave that there. Hope it was interesting. See you later.